Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to talk about Catwoman. This is absolutely one of my favorite costumes of all times, and believe it or not, probably one of the most intricate parts of this costume, which is the cowl. This is not really going to be a tutorial, it's going to be more of a watch me put this bad boy together while we talk about this amazing costume. But I am going to show a few tips and tricks in just in case you guys are thinking about doing something like this yourselves. So let's jump right in. Okay, so this cowl, just like the bodysuit, is made out of a four-way stretch vinyl fabric. The fabric that I have that I use for this costume has actually got kind of a rubbery texture and it's not like your typical um, vinyl fabric that you're going to find at Joann's. Although, because they've got that new uh, cosplay collection fabric in Joann's, you can find a four-way stretch vinyl fabric that is a little bit on the pricier side, but is comparable to the type of fabric that I typically order online. So basically what I do is I play jigsaw. I've come up with my own pattern for this Catwoman cowl. No, I do not sell it, this pattern, but you can basically, um, drape this out on a, a mannequin head and kind of come up with your own pattern uh, if you are up at that skill level. So one of the biggest things I'm going to say is you're going to need an extra hand and you'll see that I have a pair of tweezers that are really fine point tweezers. I don't think these are actually tweezers that come with like your sewing machine or like your serger kit or anything. Um, they're really pointy. I'm probably pretty sure I got them with like I don't know, one of my sculpting tools or something. But I also have this silver stiletto that I use just here. Um, it is actually a sculpting stiletto, um, but I like it for sewing because the tip is a lot sharper. The point on it is a lot longer and I just, it's cool. Anyway, so I'm gonna speed up through the video because I don't think you guys wanna sit through four hours of watching me make this cowl. Um, <laughs> one of the biggest tips I can give you is right here and right here. You'll see where the fabric kind of curves in or curves out. Anywhere where there is kind of a curve on the fabric, you're going to want to take your pinking shears and you're actually just going to pink as close as you can to your stitching. And this is kind of like a shortcut for um, notching fabric that's rounded on the edge. The reason I do this is because it is more uniform and it doesn't show the notching as bad. Now here's a big problem. If you clip too close to the edge, like I did right here, you're going to have to turn that bad boy right back inside out and sew it again, but a little bit further on the inside of your previous line. So that way you can close the hole back up again. Like I said, you wanna just be very careful when you're pinking your edges that you don't get too close. Now, with my pattern, there are some really weird edges like this one I'm showing right here. I'm basically taking one edge that's straight and one edge that's curved against a square corner. I don't even know what the name of this technique is called, but um, when I figure it out, I will definitely put some kind of link in the description box to kind of show you guys how I do it. Um, there are a lot of weird edges in this cowl. There's a lot of curvy edges. There's a lot of points. And pretty much, you just want to be very patient when you're building something like this. And I mean, it can be done. I'm basically taking a 3D, um, I guess, kind of costume piece turned it into 1D, figured out the pattern pieces for it, and then turned it back into a 3D, cut it out with fabric, so on and so forth. Like I said, it's probably one of the most intricate parts of this costume build. So right here, um, I found that even with pinking my edge, that there was still a little bit of that fabric that was being kind of stubborn and it wouldn't lay down flat. So I'm gonna go back in with a little teeny pair of scissors and I'm just gonna pinch just ever so slightly a little bit more fabric out of that corner so that way when I turn it right side out again, you'll see it'll lay flat. 
and that's much better. Okay, so moving right along, um, this cowl, as I said before, takes roughly about four hours from start to finish. Um, I basically go through and I put all 10 pieces together with the sewing machine. I'm using about an eighth inch seam allowance. And I mean, I use this styrofoam head. I put the cowl on the head and off the head just to kind of, kind of go through and make sure that it's fitting properly and that it looks how it's supposed to. Um, I cut it out just for the sake of this video being too long. Oh, here's another thing real quick. This is probably the craziest thing you'll ever see, but this stuff right here is so safe for your sewing machine and the fabric. Um, it's a silicone lubricant. And I wanna say I got mine at a fabric, or not a fabric store, um, it's a sewing machine shop that we have locally. And the guy told me that you could put this on, you know, the desktop of your sewing machine and you'd be completely fine. It pretty much just rubs off. It's like silicone in the aerosol form. Anyway, back to what I was saying is that I basically take this uh, mask and I put it off and on this styrofoam head numerous times. And you'll see um, to either cut out the eyes or to make sure that the shape is right. I take this white gel pen from time to time and I'll reshape, like I'll put the cowl on the, the styrofoam head and I'll just draw on top of this fabric with this jelly roll pen so that way I know where to cut. And then I'll take the cowl off of the head, I'll cut the parts that I need to cut, and I'll put it back on, check it. Here I'm actually putting the final bottom band on the cowl and I usually don't pin too much with this fabric just because it leaves holes. But since this is all gonna be tucked on the inside of the cowl anyway, I went and I pinned from edge to edge um, so that way I could get it through my machine a little bit easier. And then after I put the bottom of it on, I take this, it's actually called an alligator hemostat, I think, I'm sure, I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I push out the corners of the cowl, and then when I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and I'll top stitch the bottom, put a piece of Velcro on the bottom, and then put it on my mannequin. Now, this side and this side behind the ears, I actually use this hard, heavy duty felt fabric to interface those ears to make them stick up further before I actually go in and do all this hand stitching. It's not necessary to put this in there. I just think that it gives the cowl a little bit more body um, and it makes those ears stand up and kind of gives it that extra character. And I think with, because the fact this is a four-way stretch cowl, you definitely need a little bit of structure in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and speed up through this because there's probably about I'm gonna say about an hour and a half to almost two hours worth of stitching that goes into like hand stitching the cowl. Again, all of this uh, thread and everything can be found at your local um, crafting store, like your local Joann's. Uh, most of the stuff I do buy online though. Um, so yeah, you'll see that I'll go through and I will stitch the out side perimeter of both back sides of the ears where I have that heavy duty interfacing in first. So, and what I'm doing is I'm going through the actual cowl itself and then through the heavy duty interfacing. So that's what holds it in place. So when you have to go and wash this uh, cowl, you just turn it inside out, you wash it, and then you'd want to hang it over the top of like a really tall cup or if you have a mannequin like a styrofoam head or whatnot you can hang it over that as well and then i make sure that i do the stitching over everywhere where there is a sewing stitch like a seam i'm actually going to come in and put white stitching over the top of it and even a few places on the face that don't so getting close to the end, what I do is I turn the cowl inside out and I put it back onto my mannequin head and kind of make sure that I pull all of these little threads out to the outside 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in here with either a heavy duty darning needle or sometimes I like to use like a smaller crochet hook. And what I'll do is I'll just pull and I'll make a knot, a square knot, right over left and then right under left is a square knot. And just clip your tails and you'll want to go through and do that to every single one of these strings that are hanging off of this cowl. And that's pretty much going to be the end of the build. And this costume is completely custom made to each customer. So I've had quite a few customers that said, you know, I've got a little bit bigger of a head or I have a smaller head. And what I do is I measure over the brow and I measure um, around underneath the chin, around the neck. Um, and I do send out measurement charts for this, but this will give you a good view and a good idea of what this cowl looks like. And another tip is you can use alcohol wipes on this fabric. Like if you have too many finger marks or after you wash it, there'll be water spots on it. You can actually go in with some rubbing alcohol wipes and just wipe all of those smudges and those spots away. And that looks like new again. And in finale, here's some professional pictures that I had done of this Catwoman costume. It was like 118 degree weather when we shot this and my model was absolute trooper. She's gorgeous. All right, friends. Definitely feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section if I didn't answer any questions. And go ahead and follow me on all social media. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.